The stadium will cover section 5.3, definite integrals. And um, we're going to start with uh, kind of like a warm up of what we did last time when we were interpreting the women's sums. Now we're going to evaluate and interpret the following women's sum for f of x equals 1 minus x squared. So we know we're talking about a quadratic function, right? It's going to be opening up or down? Down. Down. Very good. And what would be the y intercept? At one. At one, right? So here. So if x was zero, the y value will be one. So that's the y intercept. Um what about the the is the shift here to the right or to the left? No. No, right? And we're not that vertical. One. So it's just gonna go down um like that, but let me just find the can we find the zeros? We'll make that zero. zero plus one x minus one. Yes. So we could do that, take the square root, and then we'll find them there. Actually, let me do um we're gonna be talking about an interval from and I want you guys to notice here from one to three. Okay? So we're not starting at zero. So yes, that one is a uh, solution of one, but then we're gonna keep going. One, two, and three. So let's see. This is going to be the vertex. I'm going to have another root here. And then what will be if we substitute a two, a positive two? One minus four. So what do you think? Negative three. Negative three. Oh, negative three. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty real. And then what about with, if we substitute in a 3, what are we going to get? Negative 8. So negative 8. Oh. Oops. All right. And so the area that we're going to be talking about, which should be more like curvy, that we're talking about is going to be from here to here. All right, good. Is that clear? Okay. So for part A, we're being asked to do a midpoint women's sum. So for that one, um, they are also asking us to do four intervals. So remember, we're going to find delta x. Do you guys remember the formula for that? B and A divided by N. Yeah. Okay. And so B and A are going to come from here. So A is 1. So we're going to have one. Uh, and then b is 3. So we're going to have 3 minus 1 over 4 intervals. And so that's going to give us uh, two, 2 over 4, which is 1 half, or we can use 0.5. All right? So the rectangles are going to have that width. Now, for the, since we're doing a midpoint, and this is back from, well, let me list this for you first. So, in our interval, okay, this is x sub 0, and this is x sub 4, and this is just the value of 1, right, where we start, and then our x sub 4 is going to be the 3. So then here at x sub 1, we're going to have if we add the space of the delta x right here, this x sub 1 is going to be 1.5. Yes, can we all agree? Mm. And then this one will be 2. And then here we'll have 2.5. Now, to find the midpoints, it's pretty easy to see, right? Because you will just find something here. Just mark those in blue. But then I'm going to remind you of the formula we learned last week to find them quickly. Okay? So here and here, um, and we're going to call them with a star, remember? X sub 1 star. So that's going to be 1.25. We can do that in our head, right? So then the next one, it will be 1.5 plus 0.25. Or you can get the midpoint between this two, so that will be uh, 1.75. And that will be x sub 2 with a star. 
And then here we're going to have x sub 3 with the star, and that's going to be when you're between 2 and 2.5, so it's going to be 2.25. And then finally here we're going to have the um, x sub 4 star, and that will be 2.75. Okay? So <clears throat> the formula that we went over, and remember there was one for left sum, one for right, and one for midpoint. So the one that we need um, for midpoint to find any of those key points with a star, uh, I'm going to use the subscript k just to generalize it. So it's k plus, and then here, k minus 1 half, and then delta x. That's the like formula that we went over last class on Friday or on Wednesday. So if we um, consider, let's actually, let's try the first one. So what is the value of A, first of all, the one that we started? So remember, A is the starting point of the interval that they give us, and they say from 1 to 3. So then here, this A is going to be a 1. And then here, we're going to have, we're going for the subscript with the, the first one. So that's some, our value for k, so it's 1 minus 1 half. And then the delta x that we found from here, it is 0.5. Now, this, I was doing this wrong when you guys, when you guys got it. I was actually uh, adding this first and then multiplying by 0.5. I was having a little struggle to show you that it's common, you know, to make a mistake. Maybe not for me, but I still make them a lot. Um, and it was like a very simple one, like order of operations, right? Mm -hmm. So don't do that. So then here, we're going to take care of this part first. Uh, specifically, what's inside the parentheses, the subtraction. So that's going to be 0.5. And then what do we have here for delta x? 0.5. So then right there, we will get uh, 1 plus 0.25, which is 1.25. <sighs> Yeah, so that's what we will do. Now, why is it important to know that formula? So let's see how we will enter it on the calculator super quick. Okay? So now, if the question was to expand, which you could be asked to do that, then you will write it this way as a Riemann sum. So it will be from k equals 1 to k equals 4, because we want to do 4 times. So then you're going to take the function at those key points, but no, not like that. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. The number of n times. Okay, I'm sorry, never mind. Yes, that's okay. So, um, and then times the delta x, right? So, remember how I told you you could save a function, right? So you could do that, and then what we will do here, you call the function, and then you enter um, this formula for that. So what we will enter is this. The function of uh, a, which was 1, plus, and then k minus 1 half, and then times your delta x, which you are supposed to already know from here. Right? Delta x, so times 0.5, that's just for the function, though. That's just this part. And then we do that times the 0.5 again for the delta x. Okay? Yes. What, what function do you define? What is the function of the function? Oh, the one that we will define before we do that will be this one. The one that is Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to define the function, then what you will enter for the instead of the x squared will be the same thing that we're doing here. So it will be like that uh, 1 plus da -da -da -da, and then, well, let me just write it. I can still. Okay, so we will write it this way. 
either that way, that way, or you can write, uh, what was it, a one minus, and then all that stuff, one plus k minus one and a half plus point five. Square and then times 0.5. That should work as well. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get a calculator and then we're going to practice the left one quickly. Um, now, just so you know, if you were to have to expand it, like expand this one, for example, based on the numbers that we found here, the ones in blue, that's how we will expand it. Because they might ask you to do something like that on the exam, like just expand the Riemann sum. Uh, so then we will start with uh, f of, what was the first one? 1.25 times, actually, we could just do all of that. And then f of, what was the second midpoint? 1.25. What I was going to do is just put the delta x factor, the delta x out. This is 25, right? Mm -hmm. And then the point 0.5. This is the delta x, right? That they all have in common. Remember, it's the height of the rectangle. So you could that would be the expansion for this. Okay, so go ahead and try it on your calculator because mine is going to take a while to open. So try any of those three. Well, not the last two. And on the graph you found it or the calculator? Mm, on the, under the calculator. Calculate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember how to define the variable? Mm -hmm. Menu 1-1. One, one. Menu 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to record what we got. We're recording now. So menu. Oh, actually, we need to define first, right? You don't really have to, but I want to. Uh, defined. So I just went to menu, actions, and then define. Okay, we don't want to define twice. Defined f of x. Oh. Equal. Do I have to put f of x first? No, define f of x equals and then whatever. Mm, thank you, guys. Defined. Well, I'm gonna call it. Um, I'm gonna call it r of x equals uh, one minus x squared. So we do that. That's it. Done. Now, every time I need that, I'm going to call it R. Okay? You can call it whatever you want. So then menu. Calculus. Sum. So then here I'm going to start with K equals 1 here. Then here I wanted to do uh, that operation four times because we need four rectangles. So then here we agree that uh, we were going to use... Since we already defined it, I'm going to use this right here. So it's going to be, remember when I ask you, okay? 1 plus, and then parentheses, k minus 1 half, and then times that. So remember all that. Okay, so I need to call the function back. Now, you guys see when I type r, it the letter is bolded, yes? So I call r because I call my function r, and then in the for the input... I'm going to write that function that I believe it was 1 plus parentheses k minus uh, 0.5, right? Or 1 half. And then it was here, the times. Look at the board, guys. Look at the board because this is going to be very important. If I don't put a times here, it might not work. 
the and then we do another one oh. this one here is still just to find the x value remember the one i told you i didn't follow the order of operations yeah. and then times the delta x so let me write what the formula is where you guys catch up on the typing on your calculator so this is what we're entering here. we're entering that and then we're entering Okay, so I'm gonna try to put. Were you all able to copy it? Take a picture if 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 you were not able to. Okay, so I'm gonna put control. So I'll enter, so I can get an approximation and not an, a scarier thing. And so we got negative six point six two five. Yep. Okay, now let's practice the one with left. Now let's do this a little faster. Okay, now if you guys notice here for part B of this question, and yes, we're still in example one, Mac, sorry. Part B, we got to find the left Riemann sum, and then you guys notice how here the interval actually changed? We're going from zero to three. And also our N changed. So we're going, uh, we're going to have six intervals. So I'm going to use this part of the board, okay? So then we're going to have for part B. So we're going to have that uh, delta x, first of all, b minus a over n is going to equal to 3 minus 0 over 6. And so that will be, again, 1 half. Yes? 1 half? Okay, or we can use 0.5. Now, according to our class from last week, the one to get the left corner of every rectangle um, it's going to be a plus j minus 1 delta x. So then in our Riemann sum, what is our a equal to? From this interval? Zero. So it's just going to be a zero. And then we're going to have uh, here this k minus 1 and then times 0.5. So in reality, we can just write k minus 1 times 0.5. All right, so let's try it. We're going to try it on the calculator. And since we already defined the function, it should be a little faster for us. So, calculator, okay. So, how do we find the summation, the sigma? Very good. And some, very good, guys. So, menu calculus sum and then we're going to start at k equals one now remember we're going to do this six times six intervals 
And uh, even though our starting point is a value of zero, we still have our counter starting at one, okay? Then here, we're going to enter the same function. Now, remember, mine is called r. I don't know what you guys called your function. So it's going to be the function. Now, our x values are, like, going to come from uh, from here, right here. Which one? Oh, the, the lower limit? Yeah. Yes. Um, because I wanted to actually consider what k will be. And so if I was to start at c, I could put 0 if I wanted to. But then my Riemann's sum formula might not work. If I, were to, if I was to put a 0 for k, and then the upper limit will have to be a 5, so that it still occurs 6 times. Like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's just like a counter by integers. It's not necessarily the x value or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yes? In the interval? Yes. That's another reason. So if we were to use um, what we say, oh, I just hit mine. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so for the left, uh, we agreed that it was going to be something like A plus, and then it would be looks like K minus 1 delta X, right? And this is just to find the X values. So then if we were to put here uh, the 0, and then we have here k minus 1, and then the delta x, we find it to be 0.5. So then on our calculator, that's what we're going to put for the x value. And what Alyssa is saying is that if this k was a 0, if we start our counter at 0 here, then this formula wouldn't work because we will get 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 1 times 0.5 is um, negative 0.5, right? And that's not even in the interval that they're asking us to work with. They're asking us to work from four to zero to three, zero to three. Okay, so yes, you guys are making good connections. I like that. All right, so let's enter it. And we're talking about the same function, so I'm just going to call that same function. So then here we're going to have... Uh, I will put another parenthesis just for the k minus 1. You know, if you have extras, it's it's okay. It's not really going to hurt you. But if you're missing some, it will definitely hurt you. Okay. And I have an extra one here. I'm going to get rid of that one. No, actually, I do need it. Because I still need to do that times the width of the triangle. What is delta x? 0.5. Well, I guess I need to close this one. Um, no, because it still has to be inside the sigma. So this first parenthesis. One parentheses after R, so you're only evaluating K minus one, but not times delta X in the. You know, like oh yes, so I'm missing that one right there. Okay, very good, Aya. Okay, so remember again, the X value is from this parentheses to. From this one to this one. That's just to declare what the x value is. For the for the midpoint. I mean I'm sorry, the left point. This one sort of the left point. That's it. And then this one is for for the width. Oh sorry, right thing. Now this combine once you plug in that x value in the function. Now it looks like a guy. Um, that gives you the height of the triangle. Right? 
So I hope it works. How do you see that? Control enter. And now, why are they so different? Well, think about it. We are talking about different intervals. The first one that we did was from one to three. Yeah. And the other one was from zero to three. Okay. So let's see what else we can um, accomplish today. So this is a quick check. So let's just draw the line. And we have a constant function here at negative 5. Is that going to be a horizontal or a vertical line? Horizontal, right? Because I'm telling you it's a constant function. Vertical lines are not. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we trace it. And the question is, find the area from the interval uh, 1 to 5. So from here to here. Here to five. Yes. So um, can we can you guys find it geometrically? Yes. It's a rectangle, right? So we have four times five, that's twenty, but it is below the x-axis. So should it be positive or negative? Negative, negative, negative. All right, good job. Okay, now the next one. Um, so what we're going to call the net area, it's the definition that we see here, net area. It's going to be the region, and we're going to use capital R for it, bounded by the graph of a continuous function, and with, you know, x equals a, x equals b to, you know, your first and your last x value um, that for the interval that you want to get the area from. And then we're going to add the areas, and of course, if they're positive, negative, then we'll make adjustments. So that's what we will call the net area. And the net area could be positive, it could be negative, and it could also be zero. All right? So let's sketch a graph that's for you. Sketch a continuous graph. By the way, do you guys think you can take the integral of piecewise functions? Yes. If they're not connected. Or not? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, yes. So, sketch a continuous function f that is positive over the interval one, I mean zero to one. So from here to here, we want it to be positive, and we want it negative on the interval from one. To two. We want it to be below the x-axis. And I want the total, if I can if I combine them, so I want the net area to equal zero. Like they're canceling each other. Positive negative. So let's see, what will happen at one though? Do you guys think that would be an x intercept? Yes. Yes. yes, because the line is going from above to below the x axis, or vice versa, whatever you want to do. You guys cannot copy my function, okay? No, you cannot. Ah, oh, okay. I didn't pay attention. Oh, where's my screen? So positive right there above the x-axis, and then below the x-axis. And then draw a voice line to see if you're copying. No. Yes. Okay, so then from my first one is here. What's the area right there? Do you guys know what the area is there? Put in the book in blue. Yeah, it's one. It is one. Oh, and, and and so think about it. If you take the rectangle, right, it will be a one by two. So the area is two, two units square. So then oh, triangle divided by two, so it's one. Mm -hmm. And and you might be surprised because by there might be some questions like that on your exam. So make sure you get those. Okay, then here this one is also one, right? Half of the rectangle. One is positive. One is negative, so then they cancel each other out. So 
So one minus one, zero. Okay. Now here is um, net area. Now we're transferring ourselves to the. If you keep making more and more and more and more of those rectangles, um, so then we added that part with the limit as we make n infinity. And you guys think you can put that on your calculator? In infinity? Yeah. Yes, you can actually do it. What? Uh huh. Yes, you can. Yeah. Now, let me just show you that idea of the rectangles, because actually the book has this very cool um, animation for it. So let's just do it quickly. I hope it's still there. Oh, so this is what I was saying about the piecewise. You see? As long as it is bounded and continuous, then it is uh, integrable. I'm really used to it like that. Okay, so look at this picture here, guys. So look at left. And let's say we want to make one <laughs> rectangle. So we're not good. Let's say we want to make three. And the more we make, do you guys see what happens? And what happens if we make less? <laughs> and then what happens if we go to infinity? Ta -da! Yes. Okay. I think there was another one here. All right. So let's go back to this one. And so once you put the limit in front of the summation of the sigma, um, you are already saying that you're talking about the integral. Um, now, this little numbers here, well, this is what we've been doing. We've been doing this a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, so then once we combine that part with the limit as either delta approaches zero or um, why does it say as delta approaches zero? As the change in x approaches zero? There you go. As the change in x gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Because what will happen, let's go back to this one actually. This is a good question. What happens if we make, what will be the delta x right there? Let's assume it's one, right? And then if I cut that in two, the delta x will be one half. If I cut that in, what is that? Six? One six. Yeah. So actually, we're not getting the whole picture right here. So as I increase my number of intervals, what happens to the width of the in the rectangles? So then as n approaches infinity, delta x approaches zero. Correct. So the width of the rectangle, so delta x approaches zero. See, you don't get this in uh, college calculus. <laughs> There's nice animations. <laughs> so um, that's the idea right here. So this will go to infinity and this one we'll go to zero. Okay, so we'll stop here. And then we'll continue with this lesson Wednesday. Make sure you guys work on your homework, please. Okay. Hi, Mac, we're back. So we need you to watch a video on Seesaw that I'm going to post. It's a free response question. Bye-bye.